Hello everybody and welcome to today's video. We're going to be talking about using state machines in Unity's Entity Component System. So state machines are something used widely throughout video game development, and they basically allow us to keep track of different states of things in our game. So for example, we can have a state machine associated with our player, and that will give us information about you know what the player can and cannot do at any given time. Another common use case for state machines in video games are implementing AI for non-player characters. So for example, maybe we're making a stealth game and we have some guards that are kind of you know patrolling around a specific area and then you know we can kind of have this state machine determine you know when they're walking in between points when they're maybe you know searching a specific point and then we also can get determine you know like what happens when this guard actually sees our player character does it start you know chasing it how long is it going to chase it for and it kind of helps us make those determinations of things in our games so in today's video i'm going to be doing something that i haven't done in a little while where actually i'm going to be doing a little overview about one of these sample projects that unity posted for the entity component system basically up on their github they have a number of samples that are really helpful for just kind of like you know understanding how things are set up in unity's entity component system and so in this particular case we're going to be looking at the state machine demo that we have set up now this is a very simple scene i'll be going over it in just a second um, but basically there's just kind of like a guard that's kind of walking back and forth between some points and if the guard happens to see the player within its predefined vision cone then it's actually going to start chasing the player until the player gets out of range now this is a really great project Project to review, especially if you're kind of new to Unity's entity component system and you want to see how things work and how specific things are set up. Now, the reason that I say that this is such a great learning resource is because the scope of the project isn't really that big. It is basically just a really simple state machine um, and it's just kind of confined to that. So there's not a whole lot of like extra stuff, not too much to get overwhelmed with. And you can kind of go through the scripts pretty quickly. Now, one thing that's awesome about these scripts is basically every single line of code in them has a comment associated with them just you know telling you why this bit of code is there and so that's like something that's really helpful to learn from another reason is that they have a really great readme file associated with it of course you can see that on their github page and it really just talks about kind of the theory of the project you know how it works and everything and you know why they made some of the decisions that they made so that's also something very helpful to review so anyways here we are over in unity you can see that this is an incredibly simple project that they have set up basically we have these two waypoints here which are just these blue cubes that the guard is going to go back and forth between this is actually the guard right here. Um, it's just a capsule with a um, you know pretty big nose on it. Right now it's just pink because it's using the default material, but um, when we actually get into the game, it's actually going to change colors based off of what state that it's in, so we can kind of see that a little bit better. And of course the green sphere here, this is actually going to be our player character, which we can move with the W, A, S, and D keys. So we'll see that when we enter play mode here, you'll see that the guard immediately goes to its first waypoint. It's going to stay there for a couple seconds seconds and then it's going to walk over to its next waypoint again stay there for a couple seconds and then it's going to loop back and go to the first one now we can move our player around and if our player ever goes into the line of sight of the enemy uh, you'll see that the guard is going to actually turn red and it's going to start following the player um, everywhere that we go and actually when we get out of range it's going to transition back into that idle state which is um, that blue state that it goes into it's going to wait there for a couple seconds and then it's just going to continue on its path here again we can do the same thing where we can kind of you know jump in front of it it's going to chase us for a little while and then you know let's get out of the way get out of its range here and then it's going to you know wait a couple seconds and then just continue back on to its main loop between those two waypoints there all right so let's take a little look about how this is exactly set up so if we go into this guard here you'll see that it is being converted to an entity not a whole lot of interesting stuff going on except for this guard authoring script so you see that it has this list of waypoints and these are all the waypoints that it's going to cycle in between now basically we can add as many waypoints to this list as we want to so for example say we can go ahead and duplicate this waypoint here I uh, will go ahead and move this a little bit out of the way uh, we'll go back to our guard and now we can just drag this into the waypoints here and then now you'll see it's actually going to go ahead and cycle through all these different waypoints so it's going to go uh, to the first one over to the second one and then it's going to start going down to the third one here and then it'll just loop right back on up to the first one and then furthermore we can configure how long it's actually going to be in an idle state so right now it's set to a value of three for three seconds uh, the vision angle in degrees is basically the 
vision cone. So this is a 45 degree angle, basically, um, you know, directly forward. So it's going to have, you know, 45 degrees out from its forward direction. And then it also has a maximum distance of five units. So if the player is, you know, closer than five units and within that 45 degree angle, then it's going to basically count that player as seen. If that player is outside of that 45 degree angle or past that five unit uh, distance that it can see, then the player is not going to be seen by the guard here. And finally, we do have a value for the movement speed in meters per second. Now, I do want to point out that authoring script because it is really cool how it is set up for a couple of reasons. So let me just show you here. This is actually, you know, in this authoring component, it actually lists all the data components associated with the guard in here. So these aren't actually separated out into their own uh, class files or anything, um, but they're basically all here. So it's, you know, kind of easy for you to review view in that sense. So you see that the waypoint position implements I buffer element data, which means that this is a dynamic buffer. Now a dynamic buffer is basically, um, you know, kind of like an array that we can have of data components. I did make a pretty extensive video on dynamic buffers. So if you want to learn a little bit more about those, definitely go check that video out. And then we have some pretty standard ones for, you know, cool down time. So this is how many seconds that it's going to wait on cool down. Uh, the next waypoint index, we just need an index about, you know, what's the next waypoint point that uh, we're going to go to. Of course, we have an is chasing tag, which is going to you know help us with something later on. The target position is of type float three, and that basically determines you know where that guard is going to be moving. Now, this target position you'll see later on can either be one of the waypoints that we're going to or the player character that we're chasing. Next up is the idle timer. Basically, this is just a value in here that's going to increment up when it's in the idle state. And then once it gets past that cool down time that we've defined in this other data component right here, then it's going to basically exit the idle state. Now, here's the really interesting one that I wanted to point out, and this is the vision cone. So you'll see that actually, um, here's where we're actually storing the angle and distance that the guard can see, You know what its vision cone is going to be. Uh, but notice the angle is actually stored in radians where um, actually in the editor we are assigning that value in degrees and then also the view distance we're setting just the regular distance in the editor however um, in the actual data components we're storing it as a view distance squared Basically, the reason for that is because when we want to do some, you know, math operations to determine, you know, where the player is in relation to the guard, it's going to be much more efficient for the computer to, you know, calculate that using the radians angle rather than the degrees angle. And also it's going to save us a little bit of processing power when we're checking the distance uh, using the distance squared rather than just the base distance. Basically, if we were just using the base distance, um, there's actually another math operation behind the hood where we have to do a square root of some values that we're computing. And that's just you know a little bit of extra processing power. So if we can actually save on that by storing the view distance squared as kind of our you know target distance, that means that we don't actually have to do that square root operation. So it's really cool because you know inside the editor we can have those you know nice values for our designers to implement where we can say oh you know this is going to be a 45 degree angle five units away from the player whereas under the hood we can actually have much higher performance and you see that the way that we do this is inside this custom authoring component here you see that the custom authoring components these are basically mono behaviors which means that we can just go ahead and drop them onto any game object that's going to be converted to an entity and then we also just need to implement the i convert game object to entity now this i convert game object to entity that basically forces us to use this convert method here. And then inside this convert method, we can kind of go through some steps about, you know, the particular components that we want to add to this entity that's going to be converted. Now see that we do have a couple of public fields here, and these are the ones that we're actually setting inside the editor. And then basically based off of those, then we can come down here and then we can see that here's where we're setting all those values to those things that we have uh, set in the editor for the you know very specific data components associated with the entity. And then you'll see down at the bottom here, this is actually where we're doing, you know, kind of some of those math operations where we're converting the uh, degrees over to radians, and then we're saving that on our angle radians. 
and then also for our view distance squared we're just doing a simple um, you know multiplication of the max distance times itself so we get that value there so anyways this is basically just kind of all some setup things at this point so that when we actually convert our game objects over into entities it has all the proper data that it needs to I definitely think that this is a helpful script to look at because these custom authoring components can you know really give us a lot of benefits all right so now let's move on to some of the actual systems that run in our state machine now basically the way that the state machine machine works is the guard um, its state is determined by what components it has now for example if we take a look at this system this is the move toward target system this is actually going to run when the guard is in two different states so it's going to run when the guard is moving to its next waypoint and it's also going to run when it's chasing the player basically the way that we can tell that the guard is in the state is if it has this target position component and so basically in this system we're going to look at this target position and then we're going to determine what move it needs to make this frame to move it towards that target position um, you'll see that basically all it's doing is actually moving it in here. There is just a little bit of logic at the beginning where we're just doing some distance checking. Again, we're doing some uh, distance checking on that distance squared right there. Um, and then basically, you know, if we are greater than kind of that minimum stopping distance, it's going to continue moving towards that target. And once we're under that target distance, then it's just going to stop moving the player. You'll see that we're actually not doing any type of logic in here to, you know, change the states or anything like that. All the system is in charge of is just moving the guard to its target again that can either be the next waypoint or the player if it's chasing the player now to do some actual checking to, in order to change the states we're going to have this check reached waypoint system and then you see that basically in here we're going to be structuring this entities dot for each you see that we're going to be doing a with none is chasing tag so that means you know we're looking for anything that is not in the chasing state but it also has that target position. So basically, you know, we're kind of structuring our query in such a way to find any guard that is in the particular state of walking to its next waypoint specifically, which means that it's not in the idle state and it's not chasing a player. And then you'll see in here, we're doing again, a very similar distance check for the distance squared. You know, if we are under that minimum distance, then we're gonna go ahead and actually transition from the patrolling and transition over into the idle state. So this basically means that, you know, once we've reached our waypoints, we're going to stop, you know, continuing to walk because we've already gotten to our destination and then we're going to enter into our idle state and then, you know, do some particular logic in our idle state in a separate system. So now you see that we have this guard AI utility class. And then on here, we can actually, uh, you know, transition from patrolling and into the idle state. So let me go ahead and show this now. Again, this is another pretty cool thing. You'll see that it's basically just a public class. It's not, you know, in, it's not a mono behavior or a system or anything like that. It literally just holds all these particular uh, static functions on here that really just kind of um, you know, give us an easy way to transition, you know, from one state and over into another state. And you see that basically all these things are doing, if we look at say the transition from idle, it's actually going to take in an entity command buffer, a reference to the entity that we're going to be changing, as well as the index, because we are using parallel command buffers here. So you see in this case, all that needs to be done is we're just removing the idle timer in this case. Um, you know, the transition from patrolling, that's the one that we looked at just in this past system. You see that all it does is it just removes that target position component. Now, this is really helpful that we kind of have all these transition ones in this big class here, um, just so, you know, if we ever need to, you know, do some extra logic when we're, you know, exiting a state or entering a new state, we can just go ahead and change that in one position. And we don't need to go through a bunch of different places on our code and make a bunch of different updates. You know, we can kind of have throughout all our code base, we can have, you know, multiple places of us entering a particular state. And then, you know, if we ever need to make any updates to how we enter or exit a particular state, we can just go ahead and change them in one place here. So this, you know, definitely makes sense that we kind of have this guard AI utility class. Um, again, you know, all this is really doing is just kind of, you know, adding and removing components. It's going to be like, you know, setting values. So for example, in the transition to idle, we're going to go ahead and add the idle timer and we're going to set its value to zero. So basically we're accounting for entering and exiting every state that we have in our game. All right, here's the look for player system. I'm not going to go into this one too much in detail because there's, you know, a good amount of stuff going on and I would highly recommend just kind of like reading through the comments to understand how all this stuff works. Um, but you can see here that, you know, down here, this is where we're actually checking to see if we can see the player. 
Um, so we're basically using the dot product here um, so we can get to determine you know if the player is in front of us or behind us if it is in front of us you know we're going to continue doing some trigonometry here to you know determine if the player is inside that particular angle radius if it is then finally we're just going to do that distance check using the distance squared uh, once again we are checking this off the angle radians by the way so you know these are kind of points in our code where we're actually using those you know more optimal ways of determining where the player is in relation to us versus using degrees and the standard distance the non-square distance and then finally we just kind of have some logic in here to determine you know what state is it in right now if there are any you know modifications that need to be made to the state we can go ahead and change them in here or just do some you know simple things like updating the target position you know as the player continues to move so this is probably the most complex system you know especially because there's you know a number of states that we could potentially transition to and from from in this one uh, so I would highly recommend taking a look at this one at the very least there's also the update idle timer system you know this one's just pretty simple we're just incrementing that timer until we reach that target cooldown time once we do we're just going to transition from the idle and then into the patrolling state pretty straightforward on that one so anyways that's kind of an overview of the code here now once again this is a you know pretty extensible system so for example we can go ahead and you know duplicate these guards so we kind of have a couple guards you know around our map here and then we can actually go ahead and press play and you'll see the guards will all start um, initially they all start going to the same waypoint here um, and then we can actually you know go in front of any of these guards that we want and then they're going to start you know chasing us around the map here and so yeah i mean it is pretty cool that we can just kind of go ahead and easily you know scale up this simulation a little bit and you know everything just kind of you know, goes through its states as it should. So anyways, that's kind of an overview about this sample project provided to us by Unity. I do think it is a really good sample project. Once again, it's just a nice simple one that um, has, you know, a little bit of complexity that we can kind of, you know, dig through in an easy to understand manner. And it does provide us a lot of learning resources such as the README, as well as, you know, a very highly commented uh, code base in there. So that is great to see as always. Anyways, I'm really excited to be talking to you about state machines today. I am kind of working on some things um, that you will be seeing in the near future that kind of use some state machines in them. So, um, you know, I, I'm really interested to see kind of, you know, as we kind of grow these state machines a little bit in complexity, it'll be interesting to see how the state machines actually scale and what kinds of issues we may run into along the way. But anyways, I hope you did enjoy today's video and you learned a thing or two. If you did, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button. Also, feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots more videos about Unity's entity component system and the data-oriented technology stack. Of course, if you do have any questions for me or suggestions for future videos, you can always leave those down in the comment section below or join us over on Discord over at tmg.dev slash Discord. Hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one.